Newton H. Rattus presents This Week in History for the week of January 17th through January 23rd. January 17th, 1950, Anthony Fats Pino masterminds the robbery of the Brinks Armored Car Depot in Boston. Dubbed the crime of the century, Pino and ten accomplices, disguised as Brinks employees, broke into the sorting room and walked away with over $1 million in cash and another $1.5 million in checks and money orders. To avoid capture, the bandits agreed to hide the money and stay clean until the six-year statute of limitations on the robbery had expired. The criminals came within five days of succeeding, but fellow gang member Joseph Spex O'Keefe, who was serving jail time for a prior crime, feared he would be cheated out of his share of the money, and eventually turned state's evidence to the FBI. Pino and seven others were soon convicted of grand larceny and sentenced to life in prison. The remaining two died before going to trial. Since then, several advancements in the fields of bank security and cash handling procedures have been made. However, robberies involving financial institutions still occur every day in the United States, most of them coming in the form of exorbitant credit card interest rates, outrageous overdraft fees, and completely unnecessary ATM surcharges. January 18, 1912 British explorer Robert Falcon Scott and the Terra Nova expedition arrive at the geographic South Pole. Inspired by the narrow myths of countryman Ernest Shackelford's expedition in 1908, Captain Scott and his crew set sail from Cardiff, Wales on June 15, 1910, reached Antarctica's Ross Island on January 4, 1911, and set off on their march to the South Pole on October 24th of that year. Fighting through blizzard conditions and overcoming equipment failures, Scott's expedition finally arrived at the South Pole on January 18, 1912, only to discover that a rival explorer, Roald Amundsen of Norway, had already reached the pole 34 days earlier. However, news of Captain Scott's second place finish wasn't known to the general public for several weeks, because in London on January 22nd, town crier Stephen Aloysius Harvey had erroneously announced that Scott's expedition had arrived at the South Pole first. January 20th, 1863, Union Civil War General Ambrose Burnside begins his mud march along the banks of the Rappahannock River. Following the Union's resounding defeat at the Battle of Fredericksburg, Burnside, in an attempt to elevate morale, devised an elaborate plan to outflank General Lee and attack the Confederate Army from the rear by having his troops cross the Rappahannock at Banks Ford. However, the weather had other plans. The winter had been unseasonably mild up until that point, but on the day Burnside launched the offensive, it began to rain, and it continued to rain for the next three days. The banks of the Rappahannock became a grand quagmire, bogging down man, beast, and artillery, and completely neutralizing any possible element of surprise. The attack was aborted on January 22nd, and General Burnside was relieved of command by President Lincoln on January 26th. This military debacle, combined with the abrupt shift in atmospheric conditions, prompted noted 19th century scientist William Aloysius Nye to warn the president that Union soldiers were defecting to the Confederacy due to climate change. January 21st, 1976. The Concorde SST begins passenger service out of London's Heathrow at Paris's Charles de Gaulle airports. The construction of these supersonic jets was a joint collaboration between the British Aircraft Corporation and France's Aerospatiale. Once these modern marvels achieved cruising altitude, they could reach a top speed of over twice the speed of sound and cover the distance from London to New York City in only three and a half hours. Two Concords departed Heathrow and de Gaulle simultaneously on the 21st, the former destined for Bahrain, the latter to Rio de Janeiro. Unfortunately, the luggage for both flights was accidentally routed to Detroit. On the plus side, the luggage arrived at Detroit Metropolitan Airport also in record time. January 23rd, 1957, the Huamo Toy Company unveils the Pluto Platter, an aerodynamic plastic flying disc. The toy's original design was created by former Air Force fighter pilot Walter Frederick Morrison and was based on the modified cake pan shape. In June of 1957, the name was changed to the Frisbee, and aided by aggressive marketing of Frisbee playing as a new sport, Wabo sold over 100 million units of the iconic toy by 1977. But along with the Frisbee's success, there have also been moments of tragedy. One of the most noted occurring in 1970, when over two dozen children at Antioch Elementary School in Illinois were seriously injured in a mass frisbee throwing during recess. This forced class president Bartholomew Obama to enact 25 executive orders strictly regulating the purchase, possession, and use of frisbees. So, what is the historical significance of January 28, 1671? 
Tune in next week as Newton H. Rattus presents another installment of This Week in History!